Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of Soul School. Tonight, we have a legend in the house. By way of the Guys and Girls Cocktail Lounge in Chicago, through the Regal Theater, through the Apollo Theater, to 6255 Sunset Boulevard, the Motown building by way of Encino, back to basics, back to the uh, basement where Joe Jackson and Mama Jackson used to sing country and westerns. My man has gone back to basics. Please welcome to the show the one and only blues guitarist, Tito Jackson, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. Are you kidding, man? This is an honor, man. Um, as I just stipulated, um, there's a lot of legacy here, but you've kind of got back to basics and took us into the basement. Yeah, well, actually, uh, I started out uh, playing blues with my father back in the early days of the uh, early 60s with my Uncle Luther and uh, always enjoyed playing blues and played a lot of blues pre-Motown days and uh, but after that you know uh, it wasn't so much because I want you back in to see and all the brothers, brothers had didn't allow me to play my blues and that's Michael or Jermaine one of the brothers split the pants so or Mike went out there and Tito hit some blues and but other than that I have time now to play my blues. Question. When you guys first left Gary and you went to LA, I know that you guys weren't allowed really to play on a lot of those sessions. I know with Dennis Coffee and those guys, but I was looking at some of my old albums in like 74, 75. I began to see Ronnie Massacre's name. I was wondering, did they give you guys a chance to actually get into the studio? Uh, yes, uh, they did. That was one of the problems that we had with uh, uh, the whole. Um, Motown thing is that we wanted to become writers and produce our own thing. And uh, during the end, uh, we did the, have the opportunity to do some live stuff because there was a live album, Jackson 5 from Japan. Okay. Then from that, uh, we had a song called I Got a Brand New Thing that we played on. But then I guess it didn't work out contractually. And so we moved on to Columbia Records, where we started writing our own material, like Shake Your Body Down to the Ground and The Destiny, and all those things. Now, what was it like working with Gamble and Hall? Did you guys go to Philadelphia to actually cut that first, those first albums? Yes, yes. We actually went to Philadelphia, working with Leon uh, and uh, Kenny Gamble. Was Dexter Wenzel also involved? Yeah, Dexter Wenzel was also involved in Matt Fadden, Whitehead. Right. And, and uh, we stayed in uh, Philadelphia during a period of uh, four months. And then uh, we were recording at Sigma Sound, recording with Kenny Gamble and Leon Huff. Uh, and we were allowed two songs to write and produce and play on our own. Which two tracks? I, I know, I believe on one of those albums, I one think places, but... I believe the other one that had Show You the Way to Go was Blues Away, one of those tracks? Blues, you Can't Take My Blues Away was okay. one of those tracks, exactly. Another one I can't quite remember right now. It's been some 25 years or more. But yes, that was. Then from that, uh, we went out to produce, I think it was the third album with uh, Sony that we produced fully. And that's the album that brought us the most success with Shake Your Body and Heartbreak Hotel. I think it was the Destiny the album. The Destiny album. Yes. You guys also did the Midnight Special, I remember that very well. Right. The cop yeah. coming in right. the whole nine yards. Right. If I remember right, did Jermaine join you guys on the Midnight Special? I'm trying to remember that. I think he kind of came out. He was there, but I don't think he was part of the act as part of the show. Uh, Jermaine joined us. We were in Philadelphia playing, and uh, I'll never forget it because uh, we were at the Spectrum in Philadelphia, and he was in the audience, and he... Uh, I think it was the Triumph Tour. He enjoyed it so much and he had tears in his eyes. And so he came back and uh, played uh, uh, with us from that point on. Okay. Question. When you guys um, went out for the Victory Tour, at one point, did you say that you actually really want to get back to basics and really come out? Because I'm really, to be honest, I'm kind of emotional. I'm glad that you came out just as Tito Jackson and doing, taking us into the basement. Because this looks like 2300 Jackson Street. I'm looking at, you know, at Joe Jackson with the Falcons playing and stuff like that. I see it all from you. Any comments? Uh, well, I enjoy the blues. It's always been one of my favorite musics. And my mom is just a biggest blues fan ever. I hear moms can blow. Yeah, moms can sing. Yeah, I And she's a little shy. She won't do too much of it today. But when she was younger, she could, she could sing. What about Pops? Does he ever pick up a guitar? Not even, not, I don't believe so. I think he has a guitar, but I don't know how much he actually plays it. But uh, he hadn't played for a while. 
but he's, a, he's also a good harmonica player. Okay. My father was a blues harmonica player as well. So uh, he, he enjoyed the blues very much so too. Now I got an opportunity to attend the show last night. The cats were very, very tight. Mike McKinney, you may remember him from the Triumph Tour, and David Williams all over the Off the Wall LP. He's on Burn This Disco out and Off the Wall. I mean, so in other words, there's a family and there's a chemistry when it comes to the actual sound of Tito Jackson Blues Brothers Band. When can we expect an album? Well, I'm working on that right now. And uh, with the schedule I'm carrying right now, as well, you know, a window of, I say, springtime. I thought I would have it out sooner than that, but I've been very busy with uh, myself as well as my son's 3T. So uh, I'm looking at this spring. Speaking on 3T, are your son still signed to MJJ and your son? No, they're they're actually, no, actually, they're signed to a French company, uh, TF1, which is uh, Television France. Uh, uh, and uh, they're doing very well in Europe. And that's where they basically concentrate right now. We're hoping to uh, break them here in the States again uh, in the summertime. After we concentrate on the foreign markets, so we get the uh, domestic market here as well as Asia. I gotta ask you one more question. I know you gotta get, uh, he was gracious enough to take time at sound check. He's ready to go back and get ready and get down. But I want to ask you, final question. The state of the music, I was down at the NAM show down in Los Angeles last year, and Steve and Tom Scott and Martin Katz were there. And I was looking at a lot of the chords and keyboards and synthesizers. Does this seem to bother you that a lot of these kids are not learning to play as opposed to just push a button when you do ABC as opposed to practice? I mean, I know it's not all like that. Yeah, it's not all like that. Uh, well, the good thing about that, it is uh, a direction of talent in its own for some. Uh, but uh, what bothers me is uh, that when songs are sampled, and the originators of that material is not credited for their sample. So uh, a lot, you get a lot of writers today saying they wrote a new song, but actually it's a sample from maybe an old James Brown line or a Stevie line or a Jackson line, and, but it's a new song to the kids who's never heard that material. So uh, I, I don't think they're tapping into their musical talents to really pull out the best that could be done to keep modernized, modernizing music. Also, I want you guys to know, just so you don't think he's just a millionaire and he's not down to earth. I've been around this cat for the last day and a half. Very down to earth. I was able to even really talk to him about when he was going to public schools at Fairfax High down in L.A. At the same time that Patrice Russian and all the guys were going over the lock. So still down to earth, still well-grounded, and back in the basement to the Jackson. Thank you very much. Keep the blues happy, man. But really, I came for the Jackson stuff, but after I heard, heard you, what was it, Caledonia, uh -huh. Louis Jordan. Uh -huh. It kind of got me going last night, oh, so okay. I'm kind of looking forward to it again, you know. All right. Not just a Closet Jackson fan, a Tito Jackson rock and roll Hall of Fame fan. Let's get to some more entertainment, and we'll be back in a few moments.